<laughs> Bob. Welcome Yay. to the Blunt Bob Experience. I am Blunt Bob, the man who eats fire and poops razor blades. This is Crispy Questions, the only internet talk show where the interviewer is a masochist. Now today I have a very, very special guest. Um, someone I am a huge admirer of. Uh, Hollywood stuntman, actor, and ghost hunter, Rick McCallum. Well, hello. <laughs> All right, so uh, we had hit a bit of a snag, you know, because we're doing everything digital now. This is how I mostly be doing a lot of stuff, just because of the quarantine. So the way this works is you are the star of the show. But uh, there is one other star, and that is the hot sauces themselves. So I'm going to... Well, about damn time I was the star of a show. <laughs> Try many sakes. <laughs> I'm always the guy that's in the mask getting thrown down the stairs. It's about time. Where's my dressing room? Where's my assistant? Come on. So, um, do you know what a Scoville is? No. Scoville is a heating unit that they use to measure um, hot sauces, as well as like pepper spray and bear spray. So a jalapeno is 5,000 Scovilles. This, okay. this sauce is by Bravado. It is ghost pepper blueberry. This is, I have it written down here. This is, I think, th yeah, 28,000 Scovilles. Um, so what you're trying to say is that's hot. It's, it's, it's getting hotter, though. So this is... How big is your stinger? This is um, a Trinidad Scorpion sauce. This is, um, I think, about 700,000 Scovilles. Because the Trinidad Scorpion is about 1.4 million. Um, this one is Smoke and Reaper by Pepper Palace. I bought this through them directly. It's a Smoky Carolina Reaper sauce. This is about 1.5 million Scovilles. Let me ask you this. Wouldn't it be a lot easier if you just, like, ran out in traffic <laughs> if you're trying to do yourself in? Yeah, and it gets worse here. This one's not bad. Uh, this is a chocolate habanero sauce by Count Hobula by Hank Sauce. I bought this from them at the um, Philadelphia Wing Convention. And um, this is about only, like, 360000 I believe. And uh, a chocolate habanero is actually, it's not a chocolate sauce. That's a type of pepper which is hotter than a regular habanero. And finally, my nemesis, uh, Dave's Ghost Pepper, which is uh, 650,000 Scovilles, but it is all extract, and extracts burn so much more than, re than sauces without it. Well, I, th I think you need to, you know, just because I'm on your show, you need to use the ghost pepper. Oh, I'm going, oh, you mean like straight ghost pepper? <laughs> I am a ghost hunter, you know. You, might, well, you should be using the ghost pepper. I should have. Now that I think about it, I should have just went straight ghost pepper with all. Well, the Reaper's good, though. I got a Reaper. I got ghost pepper. All right. Um, I'm going to get started. I usually use scoops, but uh, I'm trying to stick to my diet, so I'm using um, pork rinds. Well, it doesn't matter. All that hot sauce is going to kill you anyway. Yeah. You might as well gain weight. <laughs> Usually what happens is after this is done, I will be in my bed over there in the fetal position for 6 to 30 hours. Well, it doesn't sound like anything I would aspire to, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come, you know, and it's funny to hear this from a guy who has, you know, been a stuntman for years, who's probably accumulated a lot of injuries. Yeah, I've been banged up just a bit. All you right. See me walking to the bathroom at night. I look like I'm 107. <laughs> so, um, oh no, nope, that was too much. I'm pouring a little bit back. All right, so we're starting off with the Carolina Reaper, and that's way too much. Oh god. So let's start off by. Screen, can I have your T-shirt? <laughs> I love this shirt. <coughs> so how did the Hollywood Ghost Hunters begin? Well, I'd always wanted to, you know, I'd always been ghost hunting. I've been ghost hunting now for about 53 years, believe it or not. Matter of fact, when I started, we were like using a pen and paper, you know, to just draw stick figures of what we saw. There was no <laughs> fancy equipment. 
the where it actually started was at Mansfield Reformatory in Ohio when Kane Hodder, the guy who plays uh, Jason in Friday the 13th, and how appropriate that you're eating stuff that's even hotter. But anyway, he and I he and I started uh, the Hollywood Ghost Hunters there when we saw a Shadow Man. And so that's how we started getting going. I uh, I used to have other people that I would ghost hunt with, and they were the kind that would tiptoe. You know, as soon as there was a noise, they'd run backwards. I didn't want that. I wanted people to run forwards. You know, you're going to go ghost hunt, go look for them, right? Mm -hmm. When they show up, don't leave. You, you went to find them, but here they show up, and you run away. So... But Kane doesn't run away. If I was ever to ghost hunt and I saw Kane and R.A. running away, I'd be right behind him because I don't want to see what it is that scared those two. <laughs> so, What's it like going out and hunting ghosts with Jason and Leatherface? Well, it's interesting for sure. I mean, I tell people all the time, I said, you know, a lot of places we go are kind of sketchy, you know? You don't know if you know, a homeless man's going to jump out on you, you know, or anything like that. But, you know, I'll be walking down this, like, long, dark corridor, and they'll be behind me, and I'll think, well, I've got some pretty good backup, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll think to myself, wait a minute, that's Jason Voorhees and Leatherface back there. This isn't going to end good for me. <laughs> <laughs> what was I thinking? Um, I'm doing pretty good. Did I get to the ghost pepper? I don't think I have because I'm not dying yet. So you just uh, you mentioned the other day that you wrote a book. I did. So it's is that Ghost Believe? In, it's called Ghost Believe in Me. It's Go not out yet. Um, yeah, no, I, I keep getting asked to, all the time because I ghost hunt with other groups, and they always ask me. They say, "How come you always get so much stuff?" And they said, "We hang around with you. We know what's happening." I said, "Well, it's simple. Do you believe in ghosts?" And they said, "Yeah." And I said, "Well, ghosts believe in me." Ghost. Come to me. I don't don't go to them. Ghost pepper. <laughs> yeah, this ought to finish you off. So I could just see in about a week or so coming up there and ghost hunting your ass after you kill yourself. <laughs> oh, I think I've been yeah, dead this take whole the time. Shirt off you, take it home. This is the thermometer, I call it. Well, you know what? This is really cold. <laughs> All right, so. Um, this is something I'm really curious about. It's something I definitely want to get into. Is um, what was it like being the stunt coordinator on a video game? Uh, it's actually really cool. We did the uh, Friday the Thirteenth video game, and Kane was the star, so I was actually the eyes and helping with the uh, coordinating and stuff like that. Uh, what's really cool is when you're doing a movie, there's usually one or two cameras. So whenever you do a fight scene or a kill, you have to make sure that it looks like a hit, right? You don't want to see a big gap between the fists and face and everything else. Well, when you're doing a thing that's got a hundred cameras, you can't miss. I mean, you know, they've got a hundred cameras set up around the thing and the guy's got the little balls on them that reflect in the spandex and yeah, you can't miss. So it's just a matter of picking out the right one. You know. Oh, that Reaper hit me. All right, let me give you a standing eight count. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Touch your gloves. Let's go. <laughs> so, um, ooh. so you've worked with a lot of great people that aren't with us anymore. What was your most memorable experience with an actor or filmmaker who has passed? Um... Maybe Sid Haig. Uh, I doubled Sid Haig in uh, Devil's Rejects. And when they gave me the uh, bald cap and, you know, the makeup and all that stuff, it took a long time. I didn't have a goatee at the time, so they had to put the goatee on and everything else and the tattoos that he has. Anyway, when, when he came out, um, he sees me standing there, and they were doing a behind-the-scenes, which I didn't know. But anyway, they go. he comes out and he looks at me and he goes, Dude! Somebody effed you up. <laughs> so that, that was pretty cool. Um, matter of fact, I think he might be really perhaps the only one that I know. Well, David Carradine I worked with. He was pretty cool. He passed away. But not too many people have passed away that I've worked with. Mm. Um, 
I knew, yeah, I knew Sid Hag, you mentioned that. Now, you've done a few movies with Bill Mosley as well, right? Yeah, I think I've done four, actually. I did uh, Old 37, Fallen Angels, um, Charlie's Farm, we did in Australia. And I think somewhere along the lines, there's another one in there somewhere. Did you double for Kane in uh, Old 37? Uh, yeah, I think I did in a couple of spots. I'm going to go back to the ghost pepper. This one's for you, Rick. Nice. Well, see, I have to I have to explain. Kane is an extraordinarily good stunt guy. He doesn't need a stuntman at all, right? But there are times on a set where he's playing another character, and they need somebody to film the part like the monster he's playing, right? And then sometimes that'll be me. But actually, I'll tell you one that was really good. So we were thick. doing um, Children of the Corn Part 5, and I played the uh, fire captain who goes up the side of the silo and gets caught on fire and falls off. Well, I was the one that kept climbing up it with the hose, which is not easy. And Kane was the one that actually did the fire stunt, which was spectacular. So Kane doubled me in a movie, <laughs> which was really cool. Cause you, and you've doubled for R.A. as well, right? I, I have. I doubled for him also in uh, Fallen Angels. And that wasn't because R.A. couldn't do it. It was because he was gone. They had already let him go, and they realized they had one more scene to do. Where they, And it wasn't really it wasn't a stunt at all. It was just a matter of us walking down the hallway like we're stalking stuff in the, in the makeup. Uh, so, um, this. What was I'm going to take over the hosting. <laughs> How the hell do you do this to yourself? What is wrong with you? Did you have some sort of significant head injury when you were, went to that wrestling school? What happened? I'm wondering if, you know, this being set on fire is similar to what I'm going through. Uh, no. No, I've had burns in a couple of places. and uh, I've actually, by by the way, eaten ghost peppers by accident. Oh, you have? I thought I, was, I, thought I, I mean, the straight peppers. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> so... Yeah, no, um... Another ghost pepper for you. Well, you go, boy. Now, um, um, what was it like being on Ghost Adventures? Oh, Ghost Adventures was a lot of fun. Um, the, the guys were, were really nice. We got along great with them. Um, it was funny, at the very end, I had said this, it took us two days to shoot this. After the first day, I, I told, uh, Kane and R.A., I said, you realize that there's somebody just like somebody in our group, in their group. And they said, what do you mean? I said, think about it. Kane goes, yeah, he says, I guess I'd be most like, uh, like, uh, Mac. Rick, you'd be most like, like Nick. And R.A., you're probably the most like, like Aaron. And on the very last day when we were shooting the ending, they said, by the way, guys, we realize that each one of us has a guy just like them in your group. And they came up with the same three. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, and, and you did that at the end of the episode. <laughs> You did the side by side at the end of the episode. Yeah, yeah, where we each said who our guy was. What's the scariest uh, experience you've had hunting ghosts? Oh boy, many, 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 many. Um, one I don't want to get into right now because it's the last chapter of the book, but it is by far the scariest thing that's I, I can imagine anybody going through. And just to be honest, I wouldn't want anybody else to go through with it. But I'll tell you one that was pretty scary. Um, actually, several have been. Um, I was at the Pioneer Saloon in outside Las Vegas. And I was sitting there, and I had equipment in front of me, and there was other people around. And all of a sudden, the equipment went off in front of me, but not anybody, in front of anybody else. And I instantly became horrendously sick. I thought I was going to throw up right really? on the spot. Yeah, I mean, out of the blue. Bam, just like that. So I'm sitting there, and the one girl's here, and the other girl's here. It's people all around. And she goes, oh, look at your equipment. I think the ghosts really like you. And I go, I'm not so sure they do. Because right? I'm like, Ugh. So she goes, what's the matter? I said, touch my forehead. And she touches my forehead. She goes, oh, my gosh. And she says, you're like an ice, like you're an ice cube. So I said, really? And the girl next to me reaches over, and she goes, you're as cold as can be. I said, guys, i got to go outside. So as I walk by this girl, she's about a foot and a half in front of me, right? As I walk by, she's looking the other way. She goes, I could feel him walk behind me. He's so cold. So anyway, when I came back in, I just told him, I said, you know what, guys? 
I'm way too sick. I don't want to ruin this for you. I'm going to leave. Well, th I didn't know they were videoing this the whole time. When I first said, I'm not so sure they like me, a, a girl's voice they caught on tape said, we do. Well, when I came back in and said, all right, guys, you know, I got to go. I'm too sick. There was, and I turned around and a voice said, turn Rick back that they caught. Right? Wow. So you see me stop and I look back and I said, bye, guys. And as I started to walk away, there's a male voice that says, release him. So that was pretty pretty interesting it's on it's on the it's on youtube actually oh it is Rick McCall EVPs. and i didn't take it and i didn't listen to what it said you know the people that were there put down what they thought it said so let people be the judge sounds like it to me though now when you do um evp do you use a spirit box yeah i have actually i i was lucky enough i just got uh Two spirit boxes as a present for oh. the guys of Scottish Paranormal. I got a little cry action. Most people cry when they have to talk to me. It's okay. Um, yeah, I have. And actually, I had a really good one in uh, Ireland at the Hellfire Cave, uh, which the people were just stunned by the response. They had a Frank's box, which is the, mo the, the mother of all, you know, Spirit boxes. It's the one on steroids, the one that Thomas Edison invented. Really? And they were trying to use it and it wasn't working. So I walked up and I said, Hey, can I can I try? Now, one of my relatives was a member of the Hellfire Club, which is one of the reasons they invited me in the first place. We get over there and I walk up to the thing and I said, Hi, my name's Rick. I'm from the United States. I came over here to say hi to my relative, John Wilkes. And it said a couple words and then it goes, Relative? And you can see the people standing there. Their eyes got real big because it was a direct answer. And I said, yeah, I, I just wanted to say hi. And then it said a couple words that didn't mean anything. And then it goes, hi, Rick. Right? So now they're really freaking out. <laughs> then I said, all right, I want to find out if you're really my relative. I said, did you really turn a baboon loose into, into the dressed up like Satan in, into the party? And it goes, baboon. And, I mean, they just freaked out. They're like, holy crap. Now, if you think about it, in like a four-minute conversation, how how could you get relative, high Rick, and baboon in the same same thing? It's astronomically, you know, out, outrageous. So that was a pretty cool one. So, so would you say, like, you know, that all the things you do, because you do a lot of stuff, are they all a passion of yours, or any of them are particularly, you hold a, particularly closer to your heart? Oh, uh, ghost hunting. Absolutely ghost hunting. Matter of fact, uh, I, if it wasn't for the pandemic, I'd be in Scotland right now, and tomorrow I'd be going to Dracula's Castle in Romania. Oh, wow. But that all got canceled. But we'll do it again some other time. That's just the way those things work. What, do you have an estimate of how many, um, how many hunts you've been on? Personally? Boy, I've been to... Quite a few, probably 35 or 40 of the biggest places in the world. Um, but 100, 100, maybe 200. <coughs> That's a ghost pepper. <coughs> nice. Yeah, if you, if you actually know some of the uh, famous places, like we we did, we were on Ghost Adventures. We've done uh, Linda Vista Hospital, the Omen House. Uh, Pioneer Saloon, uh, Hellfire Club, Lep Castle in Ireland, uh, Belgoni Castle in Scotland, the real Mary King's Close in Scotland, you know, the Queen Mary. I mean, you name it, I've been there. Have you ever been to the penitentiary here? Haven't been. Somebody invite me. Do it now. Gettysburg. Have you ever been to the penitentiary? Pick me up. <laughs> Have you ever been to the penitentiary here in Philly? Uh, no, you know, I've never done any in Pennsylvania at all. But R.A. has. R.A. has? R.A. has. He lives in Pennsylvania. Maybe we are related. God, don't, don't, don't push that on yourself. <laughs> actually, R.A., believe it or not, even though his name is Mihailov and it sounds German, he's actually Scottish. Oh. Yeah, not and Jewish. So I, as you can tell by my cap. <laughs> um, so... 
Is it, have you ever had an experience with a, a big ball guy with a goatee crying in front of you before? Sadly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to dance with you. Now stop crying. So. <laughs> well, <sighs> this has absolutely been an honor, um, you know, to talk, you know, to interview the legendary Rick McCallum. I can't wait. No, that's the other one. <laughs> that was gonna. I forgot that I was gonna make that joke. I was gonna. I was gonna make my first question: Is what was it like to produce Star Wars? I wish I knew. I get that so much. I get people on Facebook. Yeah, I want to be your friend. I love Star Wars. So yeah, I'm not a fan because everybody thinks I'm the producer. And then I never hear from him again. <laughs> so. I, I told a buddy of mine who's a big horror guy. I'm interviewing Rick McCallum on Thursday. He starts freaking out. I'm like, oh, cool. You know, I'm excited too. And then it took me a minute. I'm like, I think he thinks I'm talking about the producer of Star Wars. I get that all the time. And then I mentioned you and he goes, oh, he's cool too, man. That's great. But uh, yeah, I thought. Well, I'll tell you a funny story real quick. We did a uh, short for, the, for Comic-Con, a thing called the Star Wars Challenge. And uh, we ended up winning best film and best action. And, uh, my name was in the credits at the end as stunt coordinator. And now you got to remember, this is Comic-Con with all the Star Wars geeks, right? Mm -hmm. And as soon as my name pops up on there, they went wild. And it wasn't because of me. <laughs> they thought it was the Star Wars guy. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, is that something you've had at, like, conventions? Like, you, I doubt you've had that at, like, horror conventions. No, at the horror conventions, most people know me. <laughs> I mean, it's funny when they come up, they say, you've been in a horror movie? I said, well, I've been in about 75 movies and TV shows, so, yeah. One last thing I wanted to talk about before I go and eat ice cream. Call 911 for you? <laughs> Is that you, the thing I ask? You, you, uh, you did some work for The Walking Dead, right? Yeah, actually, uh, I uh, stunt coordinated one of their webisodes, the uh, one uh, Cold Storage which uh, was, was very good. Uh, I think it actually won the Webby Award for Best Episode of the Year on, online. And that was, also, that wasn't because of me. That was because of all the actors and Greg Nicotero and all those people. That wasn't your first time working with uh, Greg Nicotero, was it? No, I, I actually did a movie where I played the monster in a thing called Deep Star Six that yeah. Greg made. So... Greg, by the way, is one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. He really is. Is he? He's a he's a student of Romero and Savini, isn't he? You know, I don't know. Uh, I've never really talked to him about it. I think I remember seeing him in um, Land of the Dead or uh, Dust yeah, Till Dawn. I do think that he he played a part though in, in uh, from Dust Till Dawn. Yeah, I think I remember seeing him in Dust Till Dawn, and I think he did effects for Land of the Dead. Matter of fact, I think he was the one that had the gun in his belt buckle. Yeah. You know, with it and shot somebody. I think that was great. Um, uh, my last question. Um, what, what's the longest amount of time you spent in the makeup chair? Boy, there's been quite a few. When I doubled Sid, that was a really long time. I, I, you lose track of time, you know? But it was hours. Uh when I played the monsters in, in Fallen Angels, I mean, one of them took three or four hours. And what people don't realize, it takes almost as long to get it off. Really? Yeah. Because it's glued to your face. I mean, they just don't go, <laughs> you know, they got to go a little piece at a time. And it, yeah, it can take a while. Although I'll tell you a quick funny story. I did a movie called Project Metal Beast where they tore half my face off like claw marks. Uh -huh. Went down here at Dublin, Barry Bostwick. And when we got done, it was really late. The special effects people had gone home. So there was nobody to take the stuff off, right? So I go home, and I'm really thirsty. It's like 4 in the morning. And I pull into 7-Eleven. I completely forgot about this. I got a white T-shirt on that's covered in blood, right? And I come walking in. I get my soda, and I walk up there. And the guy looks at me, and he goes, <laughs> and I went, what's the matter? And he goes, your, your, your face. And I went, oh, I've got a cat. <laughs> just walked out. <laughs> probably thinks I have a Bengal tiger for a pet. Well, that was it. 
you know, it, it, thank you so much for, you know, coming on and watching me in pain and telling us great stories. Uh, watching in pain was the most fun part for me. Uh, <laughs> come on, man, sell it. Sell it, Blunt Bob, sell it. <laughs> but, um... But yeah, I mean, hopefully, maybe if you ever make it out to, to Philly, we could we could do you know hunt the penitentiary or something. Well, isn't Gettysburg in Pennsylvania? Yeah, that's one place I really really want to go. So that that may be on the bucket list. That'd be cool. I mean, if they ever let me leave my apartment, would be nice right now. You know. Well, I'm gonna end this. Make sure we got.